Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in orthodontics is stainless steel. Stainless steel, the most commonly used wires in orthodontics, introduced to the branch around 1950s. Since then, it has remained in clinical use mainly because of its excellent formability, its low cost its ability to resist corrosion and the ease of joining so let's learn about stainless steel as we all know steel is an alloy of iron containing carbon which is less than 0.2 percentage and when we add chromium to the steel that is around 11 percentage more than 11 percentage that alloy is referred to as stainless steel so stainless steel has iron carbon and chromium chromium will be more than 11 percentage so we have three major types of stainless steels classified based on their crystal structure arrangement namely uh, ferritic then uh, austenitic and martensitic so these are three types of stainless steel so the first one ferritic has a chromium in range of 11.5 to 27 percentage and there is no nickel then carbon is around 0.2 percentage there is a maximum range then the austenitic which is also known as 18.8 steel which has 16 to 26 percentage chromium so this is the 18 of this 18 then nickel 7 to 22 percentage that is a range mostly it is 8 that is why this name 18.8 and carbon is around 0.25 percentage then the third category martensitic which has chromium in range of 11.5 to 27 percentage where the nickel component is comparatively less 0.2 to 5 percentage whereas the carbon is in range of 0.15 to 1.2 percentage so how does it uh, differ in structure so the structure of these three compounds are like the ferrite one has body centered cubic lattice so this is in bcc configuration that is body centered cubic lattice whereas the austenitic which has face centered cubic lattice so this is fcc structure and the martensite, site which has body centered tetragonal that is bct body centered tetragonal this is the arrangement within the crystal so body centered cubic lattice face centered cubic lattice and martensitic is body centered tetragonal okay so these are the difference between these three so the ferritic stainless steel which has very little application in dentistry um, martensite steel has high strength and hardness and they are used for making surgical and cutting instruments but the problem is corrosion resistance of martensite the corrosion resistant is uh, very less but it has a good property of strength and hardness so it can be used for the surgical and cutting instrument but the austenitic one that is a most corrosion resistance and hence widely used in dentistry because we cannot afford the corrosion because it is exposed to the oral environment saliva other fluids uh, so we need to have a good corrosion resistant properties 
because it is placed in the oral cavity for a longer period maybe one one and a half years so it is not like uh, mutton sciatic it has very less corrosion resistant this is having the highest corrosion resistant that is why austenitic one is used for uh, the orthodontic wire and commonly used in dentistry whereas this austenitic has uh, basically two types one is uh, where i will write as1 302 and the second one is uh, isa aisa 304 so these are the two different varieties the aisi 302 has 18 percentage chromium this is 18 18 percentage chromium 8 percentage nickel then 0.15 percentage carbon okay 18 8.15 whereas the 304 group has 18 percentage chromium 8 percentage nickel but the carbon component is comparatively less that is 0 0.08 percentage so these are the two forms of a two different types of austenitic wires so next we need to learn about the few properties of stainless steel that is very crucial properties of stainless steel the first one is passivating effect passivating effect is nothing but the ability of the stainless steel to prevent the steel from tarnish and corrosion okay so it is mainly provided by the chromium chromium should be at least 12 percentage to get the passivating effect so this chromium forms a thin adherent transparent but tough and impervious oxide layer on the surface of this alloy when this uh, layer forms when it is subjected to an oxidizing atmosphere okay so when this uh, stainless steel is introduced freshly to an atmosphere it should be very mild as a clean air there will be a layer forms on the surface that is an oxide layer forms on the surface so this protective layer prevents further tarnish and corrosion by blocking the diffusion of oxygen to the underlying bulk alloy this is called passivating effect so when there is enough chromium that is 12 percentage chromium and the freshly prepared or freshly made stainless steel brought to the atmospheric atmosphere which should be very clear there will be a formation of oxide layer that gives the passivating effect that is to prevent the corrosion so passivating effect will be there only if the chromium amount is minimum 12 percentage 12 percentage is the cutoff rate and if the oxide layer so this formed oxide layer is ruptured by any form like mechanical or chemical means the protection against cor corrosion that will result so this oxide layer should not be lost if it lost there will not be any protection against corrosion or tarnish and loss of this oxide layer and it is subjected to corrosion and tarnish is known as sensitization sensitization is nothing but the loss of passivating effect of stainless steel or in other words we can say that the loss of oxide layer so when there is heating of this stainless steel uh, around 400 to 900 degrees celsius what happens is the chromium and carbon at the green boundaries reacts and forms chromium carbide so there will be formation of chromium carbide 
at the grain boundaries okay so chromium and carbon reacts and forms this chromium carbide so loss of chromium will be uh, happening from the matrix of stainless steel which is uh, the amount will be less than 12 percentage so it losses the passivating effect and there will be reduction in corrosion resistance and it results in the weakening of the metal so this process is known as sensitization that is nothing but the loss of corrosion resistance of the stainless steel so how do we uh, manage this pro this problem that is sensitization or the loss of corrosion resistance so prevention of sensitization can be done by stabilization so it's all a connected passivating effect sensitization and stabilization so stabilization is nothing but uh, eliminate the chromium carbide precipitation by introduction of some other element which will react with carbon so chromium carbide formation will be reduced so what we are doing is we introduce titanium that is the most often used and added six times that of carbon so formation of chromium carbide can be prevented okay so stainless steel that has been modified in this manner is said to be stabilized so we add titanium which is six times more than that of carbon because this carbon has more affinity towards titanium than chromium to form the carbide okay so hope you understood the concept of passivating effect sensitization and stabilization now let's move on to the other properties of soldering welding and other heat treatment and lastly guys we have started channel membership in the industry and more channel so you can explore a various uh, exclusive perks for the channel members so you can explore various options by clicking on the join button adjacent to subscribe button so we have options of uh, personal whatsapp uh, help so you can ask any doubts uh, you will get answered through whatsapp uh, text messages or uh, voice messages and we have one more option that is uh, the pdf notes will be available but as of now we have only the public health dentistry topic the more topics will be uploaded soon and the last option is one to one interaction session you will get the personal interaction or personal classes on uh, various subjects from the faculties of respective branches so explore the join button and let us know if you want any further help from us thank you